But Sting comes on the scene, and because wrestling kept, was kind of, you know, Dick Murdoch and Dick Slater and Terry Funk, it was kind of the same. You know, men, yeah, like, like real men, just like just regular tights, regular boots, you know, and just wrestlers. Sting comes on and provides something completely vibrant, guys, like bleached blonde hair, and he's got muscles. He's 270 pounds. He's got these unique tights and didn't have the traditional boots. It wasn't like the boots you tie up. It was just like the slip-on boots, you know? And it was just like, who is this guy? And he became such a big baby face because he didn't look like the wrestler of the day. He didn't look like 1987. He looked like 1990. Think about this. In 1990, you had Sting on one channel and you had the Ultimate Warrior on the other. And funny that how both of those guys were tag team partners, the Blade Runners, when they first came into the business in Memphis. So when I saw Sting in his first match against Ric Flair, his first singles match in the NWA against Ric Flair, Clash of Champions won March of 1988. The Clash of Champions won was against WrestleMania. You got this show on TBS. I go to my friend Antoine's house because I didn't have cable, but he had the big-ass satellite dish in the backyard. I go to his house to see Clash of Champions <laughs> 1, and I see uh, Flair and Sting, 45 minutes, that goes to a draw. That's the match where Sting was made because Flair carried, not necessarily carried him, but helped him along. Sting was still green, but he was strong, and the fans were behind him. And he didn't look like all the other kind of wrestlers in the NWA. That match put Sting on the map, and that made Sting at some point become the heavyweight champion in 19... What was that first match against Flair? 1990, I think, or 1991, when he became the heavyweight champion of WCW. So that's my match, Flair against Sting, where it's in Greensboro, and Flair and Sting go 45 minutes to a draw on TBS, no commercials, and it was pretty awesome. So that's the thing for me, like sort of the gauge point coming up the same era, like the 90s. It's weird to think about it, but like Sting in the rafters is like how I remember Sting. And mm -hmm. it's obviously hard to disconnect from like how terribly the ending went and how they sort of like wasted things and that Starcade match and things like that. But the intrigue and the storytelling of him up there every single week and him not talking and him taking a lifeless DDP up with him to the rafters and yeah. that sort of stuff is like how I'm going to remember Sting. And the other thing I'll throw out there is this AEW run has been so fun. And I don't know if it's JD because there's been a couple of times where like I've been there in the presser and hearing him where he seems so appreciative of what's happening right now and being able to go out like this and not be buried by the WWE, you know, logic and things like that. Like that's been pretty cool to see. So that that's a part of it, right? Like, cause as like, I, I was super excited when he came to yeah. WWE. Like I, when he showed up at the, yes. at the Survivor Series, like super excited. When they did the unveiling, when they were going to do the the statue, and all of a sudden he's under there. Like they did some cool things, and then he wrestled Triple H at WrestleMania, and it's like, oh, right. Like hey, WWE okay. won. <laughs> and then yeah, well yeah, Monday Night Wars have come to WrestleMania fifteen years late. <laughs> cool. Um, Terrible. Great. Yeah. Cool guys. So and that just kind of fell flat. And then he gets injured with the buckle bomb when he, when Ben, when he wrestled Seth Rollins. And I think the reason why he's probably so appreciative of this is because, I mean, there was a while there. You just didn't know. I mean, he went into the WWE thing. Um, I'm not even, I think he probably wanted to wrestle once, maybe twice and that be it anyway. But then he gets injured. It's like, oh, okay, now this is probably just not going to be an option for him. And so for him right. to come back and do what he's done, this, this run in, in AEW has been, fantastic they've used him yep. in the perfect way on his way out they've been able to protect him and they've allowed him to also have some really cool moments in this run in aew you know they built up i mean winter is coming is one of the things that they do now that was his debut you know that was like the big debut sting debut episode for aew i think it's of, of the criticisms that we levy towards aew Sting is definitely not one of them. They've used right. Sting, and the way they've done Sting is the absolute, just perfect way for him to go out. I will say, I believe it was Players Tribune, but Darby Allen wrote a piece about what it's been like to work alongside Sting and the whole, like, hey, never meet your heroes, like, throw that out the window, how cool that's been for him. And the other thing to be worried about is Sting, I believe today, said, oh, people are going to be talking about that match on Sunday, and I'm going to do things that you couldn't expect. And We've already seen Sting sort of push that line for a, what, 64-year-old? Yeah. So I'm a I'm, little worried about how he goes out on Sunday, but 
but I think the Bucks would be a good opponent, and I think that'd be a good way to sort of showcase his final match. I would say, guys, that when you think of WCW, and this is another topic we, we, we may get to, may never get to, but think about WCW. If you're doing a Mount Rushmore of WCW, not the NWA, WCW, yep. the Mount Rushmore would have to be Ric Flair, yep. Hulk Hogan, because mm -hmm. he's the one that turned heel when he didn't Hollywood, have yeah. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Specifically Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Um, Booker T, because he was five-time WCW champion. I mean, he just it was very consistent. I know we kind of are tainted by the Vince Russo years, <laughs> all that nonsense. But Sting's on that list, too, on, for Mount Rushmore, because Sting could have jumped to WWE during those Monday Night Wars, and he did not. He could, right. And Vince asked him. But, you know, the one thing about Sting, as we get ready for Revolution, guys, is that everywhere he's been, he's been loyal. Mm 